Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Bro Talk. My name is NRM GPK Alexander, aka Simply Broad. Okay, I know you can already hear the excitement in my voice, and the reason is not far fetched. Broad Talk is one. Yes, yesterday, 11th of June 2023, Broad Talk became one year. Ah, it's been one year of a fun time doing this and i want to take this moment to appreciate everyone that has supported me like you all are the real mvps without you listening i, I wouldn't be making more episode releasing more episode every week so thank you all for the support and yeah there'll be a little something to win from me so just listen to the end of this episode and you have the opportunity to hear what you have to do to win that liquid something <laughs> yeah so on today's episode what i'll be doing is just breaking down a thread i saw on twitter today um by felix so at felix johnstone so at felix johnstone underscore so the stone without the e that's f-e-l-i-x-j-o-h-n-s-t-o-n underscore so he made this tweet um more this thread last year where he asked fans of every club where Chelsea players were on loan at like how they rate the player the rating of the player if they think he has a future at Chelsea where they think his level is at now and what his potential is everything like that so he put out a a tweet today he said you loved the trade last year so here's round two of asking a fan of every club with the Chelsea loan for a review of their season yes we did love the trade this time, we've also added the youngsters Chelsea have recently signed. They can't join till they are 18. Here we go. So, let's start with Gareth Lonina, 8 over 10. Lonina can become one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Had a breakout 2022 with club record 12 clean sheets in 32 with Chicago Fire, who finished second bottom. He's the youngest ever goalkeeper to play for US men's national team and had a great under 20 World Cup with four clean sheets in five. A well-rounded, naturally gifted shortstopper with terrific command of his area. His distribution has grown a lot with Chelsea. Space to improve with decision-making and distribution. Gaga certainly has a talent and mentality to be a Chelsea future number one. So yeah, he's one of the players. And he is, for me, I think he is, he has the talent to be our number two. And number two for now yes and number two for now and in the nearest future a yeah, number one definitely so that's spot on there's no surprises there because we all know his talent and everything so i'm going to be taking i'm not going to take every okay i'm going to let's do everything i didn't plan to do everything but let's go eddie beach seven over ten decent shop stopper long kicks need improving but short range excellent Adjusted well physically, impressive out of under 21s. Communication needs to improve. Of course, not Chelsea level yet. The two loan will be ideal. Consider 24 in 20 games with two penalty saved. I think that's good. Is yes, that good for him now currently? So improving, as the, he said, improve, improvement is key. He's going to improve in the nearest future, and currently not at Chelsea level so well we'll be watching him and we hope he actually transitioned from where he is now to a higher level sorry okay let's move on lucas bergstrom bergstrom 7 over 10 started like a train with match winning performances form trade off which is expected in his first loan. Massive at 6 feet 9, but needs to use his height more. Distribution can improve. He will have a good career, I'm sure. Needs another loan, EFL or abroad. So that's it. So for him, I can remember when he just went on loan and everything, just following like the um, loan army and just saying, oh, another um, clean sheet by Lucas and everything like we're just winning matches for 
his team. Yeah, so let's move on. Jimmy coming, 9 over 10. Instrumental, without him, we would have shipped an extra 30 goals. Won both players' player of the year and fans' player of the year, should aim for championship more. Time has likely passed for a future at Chelsea, or could see him as a high level champ. Okay, that's high level championship to low level Premier League goalkeeper. Talking about time being, I think so too, because you know, you follow up some players and you think, okay, this would be their year. You know, everybody now saying that um, Gaga Slonina and everything. So oh, this would be his year and everything. Oh, soon he's, he will be at Chelsea level. And that was how um, Jamie was. But it's looking as if time has passed for him. Like, his time has passed. I just hope that everything work out for him for the future. And let's go to um, Levy Corwill, 10 over 10. Yeah, a solid 10 over 10. Initially benched by Porter, Corwill became a regular force under Deserving. Injuries prevented him from playing more. However, there was a noticeable difference in our build up on the eye when Corwill played. Levy's ability in the air is surprisingly good. Brentford at home sticks out. Winning 9 over 10 area duels versus Tony and his passing speaks for itself. Undoubtedly, Levy will be an England regular and his Chelsea level, but would love for him to stay at Brighton. You wish. <laughs> the reason why I don't want to even give any comment on Levy because we all know his potential. We all know that I he's one of the players I rate highly. He's one of the players I think can just come in and almost slot in into, uh, if not first team, but be one of the squad players. Yes, there's that issue, that controversy. Yeah, with the whole disrespect that some of us th- think he is, the way we think he's disre- disrespecting the club. But yeah, if he's good enough, maybe we can overlook it for now. I don't think, I, I think if he's actually dis- disrespecting the club, the club would do something. But for now, let's leave it at that. But is it good enough to play for us? Yes, it's definitely good enough. Maybe not at Chiwa's level, but definitely, I think, better than Cocorella. Henry Lawrence, 6.5 over 10. Struggled for game time, constantly was swapped in and out of the squad. This is solid League 2 or 1 low, and some solid game time to match. Highly doubt there is a future at Chelsea. Think he will only ever be a mid table champ player. Yeah, so they ask me not just be good enough. Now, this next one is very surprising for a lot of us, especially the way we had hopes when we heard of the signing. Not that we knew the players or the player, rather, not that we knew him or really even heard of him before that time, but just because it's just oh, and that right back, a young right back community definitely going to have like a cover, be a cover for which James and all for this one. Was very painful to read. At first, I thought it was like, oh, the person that the fan is just being sore because he left. But then hearing that Felix actually had to ask for a second opinion because even everybody's surprised. So definitely, he asked for a second opinion. What do you think about this player? No, very overrated. That's Malogosto. Five over ten. Yes, five over ten. Huge difficult or too diff- quite fast, but easily passed by an attacker. First quality of a defender is to defend, not to cross the ball 20 times per game. He's good at crossing, which makes him popular, but he's, he also loses the ball a lot. Malugosto is really offensive, always on on others half of the pitch, despite his pace. There's always space in his back. He can do well in England, as you will, as you like offensive players, but his defending is very poor, and he can't position himself to avoid quick transition. So I, when I saw this thing, I actually um, quoted it and said, "He's just uh, like Trent Alexander, no, not not disrespect, but you know the understanding or the point of view that or opinion that Trent does not know how to defend. So that's just coming from there. And he crossing the ball and spamming crosses and everything. These crosses can give us five assists in two games. I think we can do. We can look for a very nice cover at centre back or in my centre back or yes." So yeah, Bashir Humphreys, nine over ten. If he's if he isn't back next season, he will be missed. Despite not speaking German, Bash was immediately a leader in the team, 
and one of the first name in the exile. Maturity was outstanding in a very physical league. Bash matched it and took the champ- challenge head on. Being able to use both feet as a defender is a rarity, so he really stood out. Played left centre back in a tree and also left wing back. What was impressive is Bash was completely ter- error free despite only being 20. Definitely has Chelsea quality in the future. Let me say in a year or two, I think I also really loved him. Though I thought he was a right back. Like that was everything. I thought he was a right back. And now I need to like go and refresh my memory on all the Chelsea players. From the academy and the first team players and even in the women's team. And everything just like refresh my memory and know their position, their names, their nationality. And the I think the poorest player on this list, Malansa, two over ten. Play in fifth worst defense in League One history. Not all his fault, but he didn't help. Lost over half games he played. Not good enough for Chelsea or Monaco. Maybe a mid table team in Prem. No idea why we sold Bandiashide mid season. He would always save us yeah that's Malangsan that player that I really had high hopes for when we signed from okay he came on a track I remember him coming on the free and a lot of us saying who is this guy we never heard of he went to Porto and he didn't really have the opportunity and Monaco same so we don't know what's gonna happen with him yeah and met in 10 over 10 EFL team of the season title winner player of the month writer piece of the most exciting and expansive team in league perfect loan spell his left energy in our left back row was key however defensive awareness can be poor great player better as left wing back and that spot may be tough to claim at chelsea yes um if you're looking at the fact that we have been true well and we have Wella, and then for some reasons the managers will always want to play Lewis Hall yeah then it should be hard and then we have Corey also who might be coming in again and so if we sell though this is not a keep sell um, loan episode that might be in the works but if we sell Corella or loan him with the plan to sell and then we have Ben Chiwell and we have Ian Martin and Corey providing cover, especially as Corey can also play as a centre back. That would be like a great thing to do. Sounds nice. Julian Sterling, 9 over 10. A player who secured his right wing back spot at Stoke this season. He showed his attacking threat and defensive work rate throughout. Julian became a fan favourite straight away. He moved his move to Rangers is deserved and shows his future potential. Yeah. I really actually thought he was going to come back. Uh, we will, you know, I have a lot of players. We have a lot of young players that are good. And you talk about holding. If I was given the opportunity to even be in charge of our transfer, I think I would even do worse than we are currently doing. Because every good player, I want to keep hold of that player, thinking, oh, there will be something good coming out of this player. But yeah, we signed Malogosto and now looking at this, it even sounds like a very bad deal. But we have right back, young right backs that can provide cover for Rich James and might even compete for his starting bet. But now, yeah, I don't want to even talk about this. And one of my favorite players is also on this list, Ethan Ampadio. I've been talking about him and him coming to take on a sport in our D instead of signing wasting money as spending 80 to 100 million signing uh um uh, Ugati or Kaisedo or Lavia or Declan Rice which just have Ampadu man our mid- midfield eight over ten Ampadu was special only signing worthy of Syria uh this season he plays better as a defender but easily plays in midfield He's very good in, in the air, imposing himself in area duels. He also gives great long balls, which create lots of goal opportunities. A flaw could be the excessive amount of yellow cards he gets. Despite being unknown, he has shown great professionalism, always giving his best. I think he deserves a chance at Chelsea and will do a brilliant job. I think so too. Baba Rama, 3 over 10. After impressing last season, 
was disappointing to see a very capable player drop off so significantly. At fought for a few goals and really struggled to perform at his usual standard, made just six appearances between December to February before his season was cut short to injury. Tino Andrew, there was no waiting. His start to the season was incredible, looked lively, dangerous and sharp, but couldn't do it for a full 90 minutes. We thought it would come with time, but another injury had kept him out until December. Has kept him out on out since December rather. It's likely it will likely be the last time we see him at Huddersfield. I would love it for the six game Tino Andrewin, but he's too big a risk with injury. Sensational footballer and incredibly technical, but too big a risk for the clubs who need to use that prem, Premier League loan efficiently. Which is unfortunate as he really gets you up your seat. Kaseri Kaisede or Cesare Kaisede. 8 over 10. Remember that he's one of my favorite signing of this um, season or the past season. And I still haven't learned how to pronounce him. That's a shame actually. He slapped my face. I should have. I took it, I took the time because actually this was not what I planned for today. What I planned, I took the time to learn some names. Like I was planning on doing a Chelsea Women episode, something about Chelsea Women. I took a name to learn um, our latest, one of our latest um, women or signing for the women. In that, so so scared, not scared. Now I think I forgot it out for nothing. So and yeah, I should have learned how to. I should have rehearsed the name. But I said the eight over ten took a couple games to get up to speed. And adapt to the pace but before but from that point he was easily one of our best players with two player of the month awards dominant in the air constantly winning the ball high up the pitch superb vision great determination and work rate he's shown his goal scoring at the under 20 world cup yes and got it for him actually italy did not win they lost to Uruguay, but yeah he won the player of the tournament and the golden boot. A low move to a low Premier League team could be ideal, wouldn't be long till he's regularly involved with the first team at Chelsea. For me, I think since Ngokante is most likely leaving and Matteo Kovacic too, what will be why will um, Kaisedi not have a place in the team? Kaisedi and Etanam Padu, the both of them coming to the team is for me is going to be a great move. Because, yeah, instead of signing Kaisedo and the Clarice for a hundred million each, I prefer having these two players that are already in the team, they are already in our books. Timio Bakoyuko. Okay, I thought that Malangsa was like the poorest player with two over 10, but we have Bakoyuko with zero over 10. Only played three games, 39 minutes together came off bench and provided nothing but energy. Had to judge attributes without thinking of him at Monaco six years ago. He always gave away the ball, struggled to dribble past anyone and looks a headless chicken. Hmm. Kendry Pies, 9 over 10. In February, of course, there's nothing. What, what else am I going to say about um, Bakayoko? He signed before I started watching football signed for Chelsea so and I just know him as one of the Chelsea flops I think signed for 40 something million from Monaco Kenji Pai is 9 over 10 in February Kenji became a senior Kenji started a senior game as a 15 year old scored and the rest was history technically Kenji is a is otherworldly for a 16 year old and I for a pass that's 2.8 key passes per 90 minutes Excellent 1v1s, very decent finisher, he has it all. Captain under 17 coming ball at 15, 5 goal and assist, went to under 20 World Cup at 16, 3 goal and assist in 4 games, and is now in the senior Ecuador score at 16. Wow. Kenji prefers to be an 8 or 10, get on the ball and find pockets. Why you see his incredible, or where you see his incredible technical policy in tight spaces. Kendry is only 16, but sometimes a player just has that little special something 
and judging by the quality shown at such a young age everything points to Kedre becoming one of the best players in the world in years to come watch this space so for me too I, from the signing when I first heard of his name I actually went on YouTube to actually watch him and for a 15 year old at least at that time was still 15 he has good technical abilities his passing his finishing his 1v1s and everything and then him being called up to the Ecuador score scored senior team at just 16 incredible incredible now to another south american he was given 7 over 10 and with the potential of 9 over 10 andre santos played as a six in a three man midfield i don't know why anybody will play him as a six i think he is more of an eight or ten which he can play but not his best suit this meant he couldn't arrive late in the box or carry the ball, which are some of his best attributes. Very, very solid defensively, monster spectacular, vocal leader at a young age. He's more well suited as a box to box, which he didn't get to do in this loan. Probably needs a Euro- European loan where he gets a lot of game time as a starter. Has a bright future ahead of him, definitely Chelsea material. Now, for him, Looking at um, Andre Santos, you will realize that in this list we have a lot of leaders. We have him captaining um, the, the under 20. Uh, we have Kenji Pires. We have Kaiseri. We have a lot of players that are captains of their youth teams. So that's that's great to see. So we, are, we have leaders coming up. Now, Alex Matos, 5 over 10 potential, 9 over 10. Matos, obviously. A striker moved to meet with this season and has shown promise. Drives with the ball really well, covers grounds and shows great aggression. He's still raw. Person is oft- often poor, but this can be rectified with better coaching. Physical capabilities are excellent. Quick, strong, and good 1v1. Still raw, but so much talent to work on. He has development to do, but he has the potential to be an extremely dynamic player for Chelsea in the future. Yeah exactly what was said because he's one of those players from this day that I, I I think I remember when he was was he signed from Norwich I think so and I remember when um, the news broke out but I, I wasn't I didn't really pay close attention to that Diego Moreira 5.5 over 10 big part of Benfica winning under 19 equivalent of the Champions League in 2021-2022 started preseason last year with first team but was sent back down Rumored attitude problems, played very little on the B team this year, mostly as sub, maybe due to contract. Good dribbler with flair, one-on-ones, very vertical, cuts in and shoots, very fast and agile but can get lost with his dribble. Below average vision and passing, didn't fit Benfica's idea. Best in 4-3-3, potential good super sub for Chelsea, still in Anthony. So for, I am looking at him and I'm saying, okay, there are still good potentials. But saying, talking about him coming as a super sub, with everything that has been said, I think we have better players that we can use, um, especially looking at the midfield, our midfield. So I really don't know. We'll keep an eye on him and see how he does. Maybe send him on another loan to a low-level Premier League team. Maybe to a Burnley coming that are coming back and see how he does there. The next player is Callum Hudson Odoi, 3 over 10. We had high hopes for CHO, not just you guys, I think everybody, the Chelsea fans, had high hopes for him. And his stats was alright in a bad team. His pace was good and had good combinations, but not dangerous enough in front of goal. That, that has always been like the the problem with CHO, which and also he got less and less minutes, but he w- as he wasn't good enough, but also didn't fit new system. Overall, it made no sense to develop a long player instead of our young players who were playing a bit better and have long-term contracts. He still has potential, but should not be an option at Chelsea next season. Is this the time to say goodbye? Because he's looking as if it's never going to work out for him. And everybody, most of Chelsea fans, feel hurt by this. 
like um someone on twitter widget bender at zen zeno said sad for him he was improving very every week until his injury and since then we've had zero management stability maybe he's a bad player but i believe he is also one of the guys that that would have have turned out better if we manage better you maybe not you can't disagree um with that yeah you can't disagree with that so coming back to his potentials are there you s- look at him and you know that this guy still has potentials but yeah turn out to that and another player that i really uh like just because of what i saw when i read um dujan richards 9 over 10. dujan is a 17 year old six feet three inches striker He's one of the brightest prospects around and caught the eye with 50 goals and assists in 18 games in the tournament in 2022. What type of tournament is that? 50 games or 50 goals and assists in 18 games. Wow. Duran will join Chelsea in October when he turns 18. He got a Jamaica senior team call up in January at 17. His power, speed and technique with a 6 feet Three makes him special and unique. He likes to get the ball deep and drive with power. No fear and excellent tight control despite his height. Juan definitely has time to be a huge player for Chelsea. He's one of, I'm just looking at him and I'm looking at a player that has potential. I hope we manage him well. I really hope we manage him well. Because if you manage that player as well, you get good returns from there. That's it for do you so let's move on to next player. Jimmy J. Morgan. Now I, I will not repeat it again. I will not repeat it. I know I've said I'm really excited about this player. I know I've said I really like this player. But Jimmy is another player that I love. Not because also a football manager. I uh, I have used him in power sack at Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, he was one of he was my second choice. Striker. I was playing Habats as a nine. What I've always complained that the manager as the one on football manager is actually good. He is actually good. So Jimmy J. Morgan, 9.5 back then. A high volume goal scorer who enjoys running in behind. The teenage England star has had a near perfect youth campaign with 17 goals, 8 assists in 18 games. Once he's recovered from his injury, he will be a serious threat for the under 21s. I hope he recovers well. Let me look at I'm just looking at this picture so I will just keep this picture in my head. You know, so that when I when next I see my recognize him. Romelu Lukaku, 7 over 10. Lukaku got 21 goals and as or an assist. That's goal and assist every 95 minutes. Start of season was injured and poor form. However, post international break, Lukaku was back with seven goals and four assists in nine games. Terrible UCL final performance. But I still hope Lukaku stays at Inter next season. Yes, let's not talk about the final. Let's not talk about the final. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. So I want to just like appreciate um Felix. Wait, will this be termed copyright infringement? I don't know. So I'm going to reach out to him and yeah, tell him that yeah, I did this. So I hope I am that's not copyright infringement because it's something that is taking really serious this is and something that we don't really take or we see it as nothing yeah so yeah we come to the end of this episode or maybe not the end because i promise that i'm going to say so what just do is take a screenshot of this episode wherever you are listening to it on youtube on spotify on apple podcast Take a screenshot and tag me on Instagram or Twitter. So at simply broad S Y M P L Y B R O D D S Y M P L Y B R O D D. Tag me at simply broad and leave your fellow first, then tag me and tell me who you are more, which of the players you are more excited about. So I will choose one, and yes. Once we get there, 
once we get there we are going to once i'll send you a dm and tell you if you are the lucky winner so i'll be expecting your screenshot and your tags so just tell me which players you are more excited about yes so that will be that yes that will be that so thank you for listening and uh, don't forget to follow me on sh- all social media platforms at simply broad s-y-m-p-l-y-b-r-o-d-d and until next week keep the blue flag flying high Thank you.